2025 harvest season has erupted into a global race. Across continents, fields have turned into battlegrounds of speed and survival, where minutes decide whether food is saved or lost. Welcome to AgroWorks USA, where we uncover the hidden dramas behind the world's largest harvest. From Peru's blueberry orchards to Brazil's sugarcane plantations, farmers are racing against time, weather, and collapsing markets. In China, colossal machines rip carrots from the soil by the ton, while in southern hillsides, villages scramble to clip lychee clusters before they wilt in the midday sun. Some harvests demand delicate hands, others thunder with engines, but all share the same urgency. Millions of tons must be collected before they spoil. These are not just harvests. They are lifelines that feed nations, power economies, and shape the way billions of people eat every single day. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you never miss the true stories of how our food travels from vast fields to your table. In Idaho's endless plains, potato harvest looks more like engineering than farming. Specialized diggers, equipped with steel plows, cut deep into the soil, lifting entire rows at once. Conveyor belts rattle furiously, shaking off dirt, trimming vines and sending clean potatoes streaming into waiting trucks. Each machine can handle tens of thousands of pounds per hour, clearing dozens of acres in a single shift. America produces more than 20 billion pounds of potatoes annually, and Idaho alone supplies nearly one third of that total. These potatoes fuel everything from French fries to chips to starch for industry. But the challenge is precision. Too much pressure and the fragile skins bruise. Too little, and half the crop remains buried. Farmers calibrate each machine like surgeons, adjusting speed, vibration, and depth to keep every potato intact. Here, harvest is a race against frost. When winter looms, crews work around the clock, headlights glowing across fields, digging through the night. For Idaho, potatoes are more than food. They are the backbone of an industry feeding millions. In southern China, the lychee harvest is not a season, it's a sprint. Farmers have just 40 days to collect over 4.4 billion pounds before the fruit wilts and loses its market value. At dawn, men and women climb steep hillsides with bamboo baskets, clipping clusters with stems and leaves still attached to preserve freshness. Each person can gather 400 to 600 pounds in a single day, working against sun and heat. The stakes are brutal. If left more than 24 hours, lychees lose color, shrink, and become unsellable. Entire villages mobilize during peak weeks. Children, grandparents, neighbors, turning harvest into a communal mission. Trucks wait at roadside depots, engines idling, ready to rush fruit to distribution centers. Markets in Guangzhou, Beijing, and even overseas depend on this lightning harvest. Demand is so high that fresh lychees sell for premium prices in Hong Kong, Singapore, and beyond. For farmers, each crate is money in hand. For consumers, each bite is a fleeting luxury. Litchi season is proof. Agriculture here is measured in hours, not months. Do you know why lychees are deeply tied to gift giving and festivals in Asia? Share your insights in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts. In California's San Joaquin Valley, raisins are made not in factories, but under the sky. When grapes reach their peak sugar content, crews hand-cut bunches and carefully lay them on paper trays between vineyard rows. For the next 10 to 21 days, the sun does the work, slowly evaporating water, shrinking grapes into raisins while preserving their sweetness. It is a sight of staggering scale. Millions of bunches line the ground in neat rows, stretching across fields like rivers of purple and gold. Workers patrol daily, flipping trays to ensure even drying and guarding against rain that could ruin entire crops. The U.S. produces 600 to 800 million pounds of raisins each year, and 95% come from California. The process remains highly manual, requiring patience, timing, and relentless labor. Only when the grapes wrinkle just right are they gathered, boxed, and sent to processing plants for sorting and packaging. Behind every raisin snack in the world is this choreography of sun, sweat, and time. California's vineyards are not just farms, they are giant drying rooms under open skies. Brazil's sugarcane harvest is a thunderous operation. 
Each year, farmers cut more than 1.4 billion pounds, with Sao Paulo alone producing over half the nation's total. Vast fields shimmer in green waves, and when the season peaks, fleets of harvesters move in formation like military units. Each machine slices stalks at the base, strips off leaves, and feeds the cane directly into trucks through roaring conveyors. Timing is everything. Cane must reach the mill within 24 hours. Any delay in sugar content drops, making it prone to mold and slashing profits. Trucks thunder down rural roads day and night, delivering stalks to massive mills that crush and refine them immediately. This speed fuels more than sweeteners. Brazil converts a huge share into ethanol, powering cars and stabilizing its energy sector. But the race is constant. Pests, sudden rains, and mechanical breakdowns can turn a bumper crop into losses overnight. Here, every sunrise is a deadline. Sugarcane isn't just a crop, it's fuel, money, and Brazil's claim to global agricultural dominance. On Peru's coastal plains, blueberries have become blue gold. Each year, nearly 783 million pounds are picked, making the nation the world's largest exporter. In 2024-2025 alone, the industry earned more than $2.2 billion, transforming rural economies almost overnight. But unlike grains or cane, blueberries demand delicate hands. Workers rise at dawn when fruit is cool and firm, to gently twist each berry free. A skilled picker gathers about 55 pounds per day, earning 13 lumber. Within hours, crates reach processing centers where berries are washed, sorted, and chilled. The entire cycle, from bush to box, takes no more than 48 hours, ensuring berries arrive crisp in US, European, and Asian supermarkets. In the fields, harvest feels like a race against the sun. Too much heat and berries bruise or soften too much delay, and the export market collapses. For Peru, each tiny berry represents more than sweetness. It's a passport into global trade, proof that even fragile fruit can become a billion-dollar powerhouse. Did you know blueberries are still harvested entirely by hand? Do you prefer eating them fresh or baked into desserts? Share your view in the comments, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the bell for more from AgroWorks USA. In Washington state, cherry harvest is a spectacle of precision and value. Across 44,000 acres, farmers collect nearly 48 million pounds annually, fruit worth around 480 million. Unlike bulk crops, cherries are fragile jewels, and most are still picked by hand. Workers gently twist clusters, keeping stems intact to extend shelf life, and drop them into soft bags strapped across their shoulders. But scale demands innovation. On some orchards, machines shake trees violently, while giant tarps catch a red rain of fruit. In minutes, thousands of pounds fall, filling bins bound for cooling tanks where cherries are chilled in icy water to preserve crispness and color. Timing is merciless. Harvest spans only a few weeks, and global buyers, from Japan to Canada, demand flawless fruit. Every bruise, every missing stem cuts value. For farmers, it is both artistry and high-stakes commerce. In Washington, cherries are more than produce. They are seasonal treasure, a half-billion-dollar rush harvested one delicate twist at a time. China's carrot harvest is less like farming, more like industry. Spread across 1.4 million acres, modern machines roar through fields, gripping carrot tops with belts and yanking roots straight from the soil. Spinning blades shear off leaves, dirt screens sift the soil away, and conveyor belts hurl bright orange carrots into giant bins. Each machine clears 22,000 to 33,000 pounds per hour. Fields vanish in days. This industrial rhythm has turned carrots into a $700 million export business. Shipped to markets in Japan, South Korea, and Europe, Chinese carrots must meet strict standards, uniform size, smooth skin, and minimal blemishes. Efficiency is everything, because over-ripened roots crack and lose value fast. In the fields, harvest looks like a river of steel devouring rows of green, leaving behind bare earth and mountains of orange. For farmers, carrots represent both mechanization and global opportunity. 
From farm to ship, the crop embodies China's scale. Fast, massive, and relentless. Proof that even the humblest vegetable can become a global commodity. Across Thailand's 617,000 acres of coconut plantations, harvest scenes mix tradition and spectacle. Farmers stand beneath towering palms wielding bamboo poles tipped with blades, twisting coconuts free one by one. It's grueling, slow work. That's why in many villages, monkeys are trained to climb trees, grip the stems, and twist fruit loose. A skilled monkey can harvest several hundred coconuts a day, faster and more precise than humans. Baskets quickly fill with green and brown coconuts bound for factories where water is canned and meat processed. Thailand's coconut industry brings in billions, exporting canned water and desiccated coconut across Asia, Europe, and North America. The contrast is striking. Ancient methods paired with modern global markets. On one tree, a monkey leaps gracefully from frond to frond. On another, a farmer balances on a ladder, muscles straining with each swing of his pole. Together, they fuel an industry where every coconut is a link in a billion-dollar chain, proving that ingenuity and tradition can still drive global commerce. Are you surprised that trained monkeys can harvest hundreds of coconuts a day faster than humans? Tell us what you think in the comments. I'd love to hear your perspective. In the cornfields of Florida and California, harvest is a race against the clock. Specialized harvesters move row by row, soft clamps snapping ears cleanly from stalks and placing them gently onto conveyor belts. Each machine can gather eight to 10 tons per hour, filling bins that are rushed toward chilling facilities. The rule is strict. Sweet corn must be cooled within 30 minutes, plunged into icy water baths that drop the temperature from 30 degrees Celsius to below four degrees Celsius. Without it, sugar rapidly converts to starch, stripping the corn of its flavor and bright yellow sheen. Timing means everything. Every extra minute is money lost. Once chilled, corn heads to supermarkets across the US and export markets in Japan and South Korea. The harvest is both high tech and unforgiving. Farmers coordinate fleets of harvesters and cooling tanks like military operations, ensuring no delay. For consumers, it's a fresh, sweet bite for farmers, it's a logistical war fought against time and biology. At dawn in Michoacan and Guanajuato, strawberry fields glow with dew. Workers kneel between rows, carefully plucking ripe red berries still cool from the night. Each berry must be perfect, skin unbroken, cap intact, bloom untouched. A skilled picker gathers 50 to 65 pounds a day, placing them directly into retail trays right at the field to reduce handling. Mexico produces around 1.44 billion pounds of strawberries annually, making it the world's second largest exporter. Shipments flow north into U.S. supermarkets and across oceans to Europe and Asia, turning rural fields into billion-dollar lifelines. The work is relentless. Heat rises quickly, and with it, the risk of softening fruit. Workers rush to fill crates before midday. When berries bruise more easily, trucks idle at the edge of fields, ready to haul produce to cold storage. For farmers, strawberries are red currency. For workers, each tray is both labor and livelihood. For global consumers, the fruit is sweetness on demand, made possible only by dawn to dusk precision. In the savannas of Ivory Coast, cashew season transforms entire communities. Across 1.6 million acres, 500,000 smallholder families gather fallen cashew apples, twisting the attached nuts free by hand. Piles of fruit dry on tarps under the sun, turn daily to prevent mold. Within a week, billions of pounds are bagged and shipped to processors. Annual output reaches 2.8 billion pounds, making Ivory Coast the world's largest cashew producer. Yet the process remains backbreaking. Without widespread mechanization, families bend for hours, shells staining their hands with caustic oils. It is labor-intensive, but for many households, cashews are the difference between poverty and survival. The white gold of West Africa feeds global demand from India to Vietnam, where nuts are roasted and packaged for consumers worldwide. Each shipment is a testament to human endurance. Cashew farming here is more than agriculture. It is social infrastructure, sustaining millions and anchoring Ivory Coast's economy in a volatile global market. 
Do you prefer cashews as a simple snack or as an ingredient in cooking? Share your thoughts below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to keep exploring with AgriWorks USA. In California's pistachio orchards, harvest begins with the roar of hydraulic machines. Steel arms grip tree trunks, shaking violently for seconds. Hundreds of pounds of nuts rain down, caught by giant canvases stretched beneath. Conveyor belts whisk them into bins in a process that feels more like industry than farming. Farmers can harvest hundreds of trees per day this way, collecting nuts that must reach processors within 24 hours. Once delivered, pistachios are sorted, hulled, dried, and grated before heading to export markets in China, Europe, and the Middle East. The scale is staggering. The U.S. produces billions of pounds annually, with California leading global exports. Pistachios here are not a seasonal treat. They are a billion-dollar powerhouse. Under the autumn sun, orchards thunder with the sound of machines, leaves trembling as branches surrender their treasure. For growers, every shake is profit falling from the sky. For the world, it is another taste of America's agricultural muscle. Along the Nile Delta, Egypt's date harvest unfolds with quiet precision. Farmers bag fruit clusters weeks before ripening, shielding them from insects and dust while allowing air to circulate. When the season peaks, a simple shake releases fully ripened dates into the waiting bags, clean, intact, and ready for market. Egypt produces around 3.81 billion pounds of dates each year, the largest in the world. From village groves to industrial plantations, every piece is handled with care to preserve quality for domestic use and export. The process is deceptively simple. Mesh bags tied to trees, ladders leaned against trunks, farmers climbing under scorching sun. Yet this system reduces waste and damage dramatically, turning fragile fruit into a reliable commodity. From Cairo's markets to European importers, Egyptian dates are prized for consistency. Behind every sweet bite is a blend of tradition and ingenuity, one that turns palm groves into engines of national pride and export revenue. From Idaho's potato fields to Peru's blueberry orchards, these harvests prove the scale of human ingenuity. Machines dig, hands pick, and billions of pounds move through global markets every year. They feed families, power industries, and keep economies alive. But the rush has a cost. Climate extremes, fragile supply chains, and relentless labor demands. Each storm, each market crash, threatens to unravel the system that feeds billions. Agriculture today is more than food. It is survival. And the question remains, can we sustain this pace without exhausting the land, the workers, and the planet itself? Which of these harvests surprised you the most? Share your thoughts in the comments and remember to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you never miss the hidden stories of global agriculture with AgriWorks USA.